plea, forgive your sins, dismiss your case, crying the everlasting life as a free gift. I'm lusting right now. Yeah. I'm lusting. Everlasting life through the gospel, through the death and resurrection of the Savior. Our world is not good. We as humans, we're violent by nature. Are you talking about yourself or other people? Other people, people in general. What about you? I mean, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a violent person, but I don't think I've, I've done enough good in my life to get an afterlife. What's your thoughts on the afterlife? That there is an afterlife, but, you know, we don't know if we go up or down. I personally believe we don't have one. So why have you come to that conclusion? Um, I don't know. I've gone to Catholic schools and Christian schools and everything I've learned about, I feel like we we as humans don't deserve it. How can we, from all the bad we've done in this world, deserve an afterlife? Everlasting, that's, that's something you get when you're good. Um, our world is not good. We as humans, we're violent by nature. You're talking about yourself or other people? Other people, people in general. What about you? I mean, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a violent person, but I don't think I've, I've done enough good in my life to get an afterlife. So do you think this God is happy with you or angry at you? Um, neither. You're not doing anything that could displease God? Well, whatever I do, it affects me. So it's, I'm only hurting myself if I'm, if I'm doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing. No, you're not. Looking at pornography doesn't hurt yourself. It gives you great pleasure. Having sex with your girlfriend doesn't hurt you. It gives you great pleasure. Even stealing can give you pleasure. It's a sense of excitement. So you're not hurting yourself. But you are sinning against God when you break His commandments. So and if I'm watching pornography, that again, it's just pleasing myself. I don't see anything wrong with that. Of course you don't. But God does. He says it's wrong. It's wrong to lie and steal. You know that. You tell a judge that. Say, Judge, I'm going to lie to you and I just stole something from a, a bank. He's going to say you're going to jail. Because he says it's wrong. And his law is based on God's law. Do you know what intent is in criminal law? No. It must be present for a prosecutor to make his case. He's got to prove intent. Uh, for instance, if a man plows his car through a group of people and kills them, the prosecutor's got to prove intent. Did he intend to do that or did his brakes just fail? If he intended to do it, it's murder. If his brakes failed, it's not murder. So intent needs to be there for the prosecution to be successful. So I'm going to um, give you a little court case. Can you handle that? Go for it. Let's go ahead. And I'm going to be the prosecutor, you be the defendant. I'm going to see if there's intent, because you said people are basically evil. Let's see if you fit into that category. Do you think you're a good person? I would like to believe I am. So let's go through the commandments, see how you're going to do on Judgment Day. So you have lied? We all have lied. You have stolen? We all have stolen. So you're a lying thief? I wouldn't say that. Have you ever stolen something? Yes. What do you call someone who steals things? Stealer. No? A thief. A thief, sorry. So what are you? A thief. A lying thief. <laughs> yes, I still lying. think you're a good person. No, not by any chance. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Like, yeah. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Um, no. Why not? I don't know. God comes up first instead of my mom's name. Why doesn't your mother's name come up and use that to cuss instead of using a filth word? You could use your mother's name. I could, but God comes up first for some reason. Well, you'd never do that to your mother. You honor your mother. You respect your mother. You love her, and you'd never treat her with such disdain as to use her name as a cuss word. And yet you've taken the holy name of God, the one that gave you life, and used it in the place of a four-letter filth word to express disgust. That's called blasphemy, punishable by death in the Old Testament. Have you had sex before marriage? Oh, my goodness. Um, too personal? Yeah, too personal. Plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Have you ever looked in a mirror in the morning? I think we all have done, yeah. yeah. And why do you do that? To brush my teeth, comb my hair, brush, uh, wash my face. Yeah, you want to get cleaned up before you go public. The mirror just reflects what you are in truth so you can clean up. And all the commandments do is reflect what we are in truth. Lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterers at heart. And we need God's mercy because we don't want to end up in hell. The Bible says all liars are their part in the lake of fire. And man, I'd hate you to go to hell. That horrifies me. I've just met you, but I love you. I care about you. And the thought of you ending up in hell takes my breath away. Here's a quick summation of your case. I'm not judging you. But you've just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart. How do you plead, innocent or guilty, for judgment day? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. Does that concern you? No. Do you know... I don't have to, but I can go back and prove intent for each of those crimes you committed against God. You intended to lie. You intended to mm -hmm. steal. 
you intended to blaspheme, you intended to fornicate. And so you're, you're without excuse on Judgment Day. Plus, did you say you're an atheist? Um, I wouldn't say I'm an atheist. It's just I don't believe that I don't have enough information to believe there's a God. And then I don't have Yes, you do. Huh? Of course you do. I don't, though. Well, I'm going to change your mind about that, too. What would you think of my mentality if I looked at a building and said, I don't have enough information to tell me there was a builder? Of course I do. The building didn't build itself. The building is proof of a builder. What would you think of my mentality if I looked at a painting and said, I've got no information to tell me there was a painter? Of course I do. The painting is evidence of the painter. Paintings don't paint themselves. Buildings don't build themselves. And creation is ample evidence to show any sane person there is a creator. Plus, he gave you a conscience. The word conscience means with knowledge. Con is with, science is knowledge. And every time you look at the sky, the Bible says you know God exists. It says the heavens declare his glory. It's like his paintbrush has painted those clouds and the sun and the moon, the stars and the blueness of the sky, and you see his glory in his creation. So well, without excuse, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 1. Now you said you don't care about going to hell. Man, that horrifies me. Matthew, I've just met you, but I love you, I care about you, and the thought of you going to hell horrifies me. Now you went to a Christian school and a Catholic school. Do you remember the Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? No, I, I don't remember. Either you weren't listening or they didn't teach you much there. It's a very I mean, famous... They didn't teach me much over there. Just... You got your ear in, whipped all the time. What did you do? I was a bad kid. <laughs> You're a brat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, the wages of sin is death. That means God has paid you in death for your sins. Sin is so serious to God that he's given you the death sentence. That's why you're going to die. And after this, the judgment. And I've got a question for you. Would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? Uh, if I was that desperate, yeah, probably. Would you sell them both for a hundred million? No, I need at least one eye. Yeah, your eyes are priceless. And yet, the real you, Matthew, looks out of those windows you call eyes. So if your eyes are without price, how much more is your life worth? And you're saying, I don't care if I lose it. Are you crazy? Life is so precious. Now tell me, Christian school, even though you're a brat, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you remember? I think there was the Easter bunny. He sent an Easter bunny for us to pet it. And then if we pet it, the bunny, then we were saved. Uh, didn't he send Jesus and Jesus died for our sins on the cross? Okay, now you know that. Almost everybody does. You may not know this. So the Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said it is finished just before he died. Matthew, if you're in court and someone pays a fine, the judge can let you go. Even though you're guilty, you can say, Matthew... There's a stack of speeding fines here. This is deadly serious. But someone's paid him. You're free to go. And you can walk out of his courtroom, even though you're guilty, because someone else paid your fine. And justice can be done. Well, God can let you walk on judgment day. He can grant you everlasting life. He can take the death sentence off you because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood 2,000 years ago. That means God can let you live forever. Not as some spook on a cloud playing a rusty harp but a brand new body with no disease, pain, suffering, or death, pleasure forevermore. That's the promise of God. But what you must do is repent and trust in him who suffered for us on the cross and rose again on the, th on the third day. Do you know what repentance is? Um, where you ask for forgiveness. No, it's more than that. It's where you turn from sin. You don't say, I'm a Christian, but you fornicate and lie and steal. Mm -hmm. That's playing the hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So repentance must be genuine and sincere. It must be sincere to be genuine. And then you trust in Jesus like you trust in a parachute. You know, if you're on the edge of a plane 10,000 feet up and you had no concern that you were jumping without a parachute, one of the greatest favors I could do for you would be to hang you out the plane by your ankles just for five seconds. You'd come back in and say, Man, give me a parachute because fear has done its duty. It's been your friend, not your enemy. And what I've tried to do because I love you is hang you out eternity by your ankles just for a few moments to show you it's a fearful thing to fall into God's hands. When you've, when you've used his name as a cuss word, when you've violated your conscience, broken his law, and his wrath is stored up upon you, and it's going to be revealed on judgment day, and I want you to repent and trust in the Savior because it's a terrifying thing to fall into God's hands. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I do. You going to think about this? I will. I'm thinking about it right now. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Are you going to get right with God? I don't know about that, but I'll think about it. I'll well, you know what's stopping you getting right with God? Hmm. It's your love of fornication and pornography, probably, if you're a normal guy. You're probably right. Yeah, you're thinking to yourself, man, if I become a Christian, I can't look at porn. It gives me so much pleasure. You know, and fornication is just delirious what excitement. What am I doing when I'm bored? You've got to remember that God gave you the apparatus for sex. He gave women the apparatus for sex. But he gave it a little rule. He says, don't do it outside of marriage. 
It's like someone gives you a car and says, hey, don't drink and drive, stay on the right side of the road. If you go on the wrong side of the road, you're going to get disaster. We've got rules everywhere. If you play football and there's no rules, you're going to get chaos. The rules make a free game. So God says, sex is for your pleasure. I've made you to have pleasure with sex, and you can create after your own kind on top of that while you're enjoying it. It's a delirious, wonderful thing God's done for us, but just obey the rules. It's like this as I close. It's like your dad says, son, I want to give you a brand new $20 bill. That's what the dad's thinking. I'll give it to you in the morning. And you break into his room in the night while he's asleep and steal it out of his wallet. Now you've taken something that was wonderful and made it something bad. And that's what sex is. It's a gift from God to you, but it's an illegitimate use of it. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. The miracle of conversion is God will change your heart so you love righteousness instead of sin. It's the new birth when you're born again. He says, I'll create a new heart in you and cause you to do the things I want you to do without my even telling you. It's a miracle. If you want a miracle from God, he'll give you that personal miracle where he'll cause you, a sin-loving sinner, to love righteousness and that which is right. And you'll shake your head for the rest of eternity saying, man, God did an incredible thing in my life. He saved me from death and hell and changed my heart so I love that which is right. So you are going to think about this? I will. And God can legally forgive your sins, dismiss your case, grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood and rose from the dead. Now this isn't making sense to you. It's foolishness. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is to those that are perishing foolishness. But God's offering everlasting life through the gospel, through the death and resurrection of the Savior. And anything to you is more important to you than everlasting life at the moment. And that grieves my heart. So God commands you to repent of your sins, trust in Christ, and he'll grant you forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. I'm lusting right now. Yeah. I'm lusting. Ed, it's been very gracious of you to listen to me. I know you haven't agreed with me, but you've had the, the kindness to listen, and I hope you'll think about it. Because if you're going to die tonight at midnight, you'll be hanging on to every word I'm saying. You've got a will to live. Something in you says, I don't want to die, so please listen to it. And I know you're mocking me, and you think I'm an idiot, but I care about you, and I want you to be saved. I hate you to go to hell. So will you at least think about this? I think about it every night. Seriously? Yeah, whatever you do within you, it's up. To, it's, it's with you. It's not with, say, a testament and ten commandments and... Well, God wrote his law on your heart, so you're without excuse. God's given light to every man, and all I can do is plead with you. Please think about your eternal salvation. I'm just going to leave you with the words of Jesus. He said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So, Ed, thanks for listening to me. I appreciate it as much as you did. Okay, this is a little P.S. from Ed. When the camera was off, you said that you don't believe everything I said, but a lot of what I said did seem to make sense. Is that what you said? Yes, it does have merit. It does, uh, I think it's embedded in our, again, mind and heart. Well, that's my confidence, is that you've got a conscience, and the conscience will be a witness of what I'm saying. So please listen to your conscience, and I thank you for that little concession of just sharing what we talked about. Absolutely, Ray. Thank you for your time. This is the Evidence Bible, everything you'd ever want to know about evangelism. It's over 1,800 pages, filled to overflowing with apologetical arguments, everything you'd ever want to know about reaching the lost. It's available at livingwaters.com, amazon.com, or at your Christian bookstore.